Thank you, Sam. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you all. I am Arthur D'Souza, a Principal Customer Success Specialist, part of the Customer Success Organization here at BMC. I've been with BMC for 10 years and based in Spain. Thank you for joining me on this webinar, which is an introduction to Helix dashboards. The agenda for the webinar today is that we'll talk about Helix dashboards, the advantages, we'll show a couple of Helix dashboard examples, data source plugins, Helix dashboards versus smart reporting. Then we'll move to a demonstration and finally a summary. About Helix dashboards, Helix dashboards replaces smart reporting as our reporting and dashboards application. It is based on Grafana, an open source dashboards platform. BMC Helix solutions that are supported are Helix Service Management, which includes ITSM, Digital Workplace, Business Workflows, Virtual Agent, and Custom AR IS apps. Helix Operations Management, Helix Remediate, Cloud Security and Automation Console, and also Helix Capacity Optimization. Therefore, covering the Helix product set within the application. The advantages with BMC Helix dashboards, it is a centralized common reporting and dashboards framework from BMC Helix platform and extensible throughout the entire enterprise. Proven technology for scale and performance and cloud native architecture. There's custom panel plugins for our DSOM domain, for example, stack bar chart and cross tabs. It is based on Grafana technology, industry leading open standards based providing faster time to enhance, customize, and innovate, which provides a better support for our, our customers. It also has a seamless single sign-on experience. Helix Dashboards provides a unified view of services and operations. It also provides a holistic view of your service, which will assist with performance identification, proactive issue resolution, more accuracy, dashboards out of the box configurations. You can make custom and comprehensive views of your services to streamline investigations, including problem analysis and major incident analysis. You can also create dashboards with data from your different components like ITSM, business workflows, chatbot, etc. This is a list of the Helix dashboard data source plugins that are available to you. The service management plugin is used for ITSM. Smart reporting included various collaboration options like storyboard, present stories, etc. There's no such collaboration options in Helix dashboards. However, the customer adoption of these collaboration options in Smart Reporting was insignificant. Customers instead use collaboration options in Smart IT, which continues to be available. BMC also has a roadmap for Smart IT integration with MS Teams, Slack, and so on. Collaboration takes place across the BMC Helix solution. There is multiple ways to design reports, for example, from a starter point of view, from form-based, where you select a form and fill from the list to an advanced, which is freehand SQL, which provides flexibility and freehand query for report design. On a roadmap, there is a wizard based guided report creation, a panel design, a marketplace community content, and data dictionary ERD for apps. There is a range of data sources SQL, server, Postgres SQL, MySQL. The report distribution via CSV, JSON, and JSON API. The, the report distribution can also be externally sent. Grafana is a proven technology for scale and performance. And finally, the, the ability to report on digital workplace data allows customers to, li customers to analyze your digital workplace catalog data using the dashboards. We'll now move into a demonstration of Helix dashboards. 
Moving on to the Helix portal. So once you've upgraded to the relevant version that was mentioned in the presentation, you'll have access to this Helix portal where you'll be able to access your applications such as Discovery, Digital Workplace, Innovation Suite. From here, you'll be able to access your Helix dashboards, which you can launch directly. By launching there, it will take you to the Helix dashboards landing page. So this is the landing page where it has this top banner here, which is customizable. Um, so if you look to edit this top banner, you can add in uh, a link into, into that panel as well, as well as putting a title and description in that panel. Uh, it's, the page is customizable, so if you, you know if you like to, you can move you put the the banner down the bottom, or you can move it wherever where, anywhere on the page. You can you can remove these videos, for example, um, so you don't have to have those on the page itself as well. On the on the dashboards area, so in under this term here, dashboards. So you have your start dashboards which is basically your favorites. Um, so you can have quick access to your dashboards there. Um, and also recently viewed dashboards. Um, so all the ones you've, that you've viewed recently. Okay. You can go to your preferences, um, which takes you to your profile. Uh, there's different themes here. So dark and light, I've got it. So there's light as a, as a default. Um, you can also decide if you wanted a home dashboard, you can set whatever dashboard you like, as well as your time zone and week start. So these are your, your preferences. Now moving into configuration. By default, the deep data source for um, is BMC Helix. So that's always going to be your default data source. Under users, you'll have the, all the users listed that have access to, to dashboards, um, as well as the team. So you'll understand how many users there are in terms of licensed users and administrators as well. Now, plugins are, are a form of data sources. So it's basically a one-stop shop on reporting of the service management and item. So if we look at here, the data sources, all the all the data sources are listed that are installed. And same with the panels. So with the panels, there's different types of bar charts, bar gauges, heat maps. Again, these are these are all installed when you have Helix dashboards. Moving on to schedule reports. So if we go into schedule reports, just like smart reporting, you can uh, schedule a report to be sent to your users. Um, first of all, if we go here in the settings, so you can set up uh, your company URL and, and logo as well, add in any footer text and URL. Um, one of the features that is with Helix dashboards is that you can send the dashboard and reports to external users, so which is a toggle setting here. Um, but also allow you to, to send to any specified domain. So if there was only one domain where you would allow access um, for the reporting to be sent, that can be specified in, in this domain for external users. Now, if we go back to the reports tab, um, we, have a, we have a schedule report, which I created earlier. So if we go into here, so what we would do is just set up a name description, uh, set up any type, how you like the report to be sent, whether it be a PDF, a CSV or XLS, add in your recipients. Again, just to mention, you can send it to external users, add in the subject and a custom message. Um, it will also give you reporting options in terms of time range um, and also in also the dashboard variables. In terms of PDF styling, you can have it as portrait or landscape. And also in terms of a layout as well, you can have it as a grid or a, or a simple view. And for the scheduler, you, you've got the options, whether it be yearly, monthly, hourly, daily. And you can choose any more than one day a week. So you, you can set the schedule to run every day or twice a week. And also um, you can set the timing for the schedule. 
And once that's been scheduled, you can you can save that schedule, and then that schedule will be set for the for the uh, report. If we just go back into, if I highlight this schedule, from here you can clone the schedule. So if you'd like to set up another schedule of that same report, you can do that just by cloning and just by editing and changing the recipients. Um, you got also an option to run that now and also enabling the, the schedule. So this current report is um, disabled, but I can easily enable it here. Moving on to Explore. So the idea behind Explore is to, when you want to create a dashboard and understand how the query is going to look and what information you're looking for a dashboard or a report, the, the, the Explorer will give you that um, primary insight in, term, in terms of data that you're seeking. So if we look at the, um, what we'll do is go into service management. Now, as mentioned in the presentation earlier, there's, there's two options. Either you can go do the query by form if you've got the expertise and skills in, in under service management, or if you do have SQL queries um, skills, and expertise, then you can certainly run an SQL editor query um, by doing it that way. But for, for myself, we'll use form. So the form name, um, if we just choose one, for example, HPD help desk, we'll take something straightforward uh, with help desk, and then we'll select a couple of column names. So maybe we can state, select status. On the right hand side, we can add in add in another. So let's add in, uh, for example, priority. And as you see, as we build out the build out the form, the the information is below. So this is the query that you're putting together with the with the data output that's below. So there is other other fields here. Um, you can also add in, for example, calculated field. There is these aren't visible at the moment, but you can make these visible. So let's, for example, take calculated field, and if we take a calculated field, for example, the number of incidents. Now, as you see, it's it's got the C1, which is the status, the C2, which is the the priority, and then you see here calculated field CF1, which is the, the number of incidents. So they're the calculated fields of data. Now, if you go into the expector, so the stats of, of the query, so basically this provides an understanding of how long the query that you ran will, has taken. So again, it's, it's good for information when you're putting together a dashboard query to understand how much information there is, but most importantly, how long that query will take to deliver that information. Now, you can also um, take a look at the data as well. So if you go into the data, um, it provides it on, on the information, but you can also download a CSV file uh, for review. So you can download it into, the, into a CSV and it can review that data of information at your perusal. Moving on to dashboards. So if we look at to browse, so there's a number of folders available uh, for the different areas in relation of, of the dashboard. So here, for example, you see digital workplace um, reports and dashboards available, um, ITSM, live chat, etc. So there's many available folders that you have access to. Before we go into the dashboards, um, we'll look at a playlist. So a playlist is basically where you have, for example, uh, a service desk and you have a monitor on the screen and you can set up a, a, a revolving screen uh, to display a couple of dashboards, for example, to the service desk team so they understand and get a good view of understanding what's currently happening on the service desk. So there's currently um, one which is, has been set up. So if I just quickly edit this and we can show you um, in terms of the just the name we can put in to change every single, maybe five seconds um, to change every time and choose what dashboards you want to have on that, on that screen. 
um, and you can also add in any other dashboards. And if we save that, now just for the example here, we can start a playlist. We'll put it onto normal, um, and then let's start the TV. So if you remember, this will go onto a large TV screen on your on your wall. So it pulls up here first of all the one dashboard, and shortly soon you'll see that in a few seconds, it will evolve onto the the other dashboard. Okay. So in terms of library panels, the the library panels is basically where you have a, a selection of available. Uh, dashboards or reporting that's currently available for users to use so you don't have to keep each time to set up from from zero from scratch um, and you can use those as a library you can use those when you need to or create a dashboard uh, you can see what's available and look to use those panels that's available already for calculated fields as I showed you in the in the query there are a, a, um, customized and also set default calculated fields available which are out of the box so these are created here for example in incident management there is several there are several calculated fields but you can also create your your own calculated fields let's look at a, a dashboard so if we open up a, a dashboard here So with the, with dashboards, it's very flexible in terms of move designing the dashboard how you like. So by here, you can drag and drop the the dashboard to where you like. Um, so you can design it how you how you wish to, and display it. Also, the if we look up here, you can also add in add in another panel to the dashboard. Um, and also in terms of the data on the dashboard you can also choose a time range if you want a specified date you can do a time range date or if you want to look at last minutes hours days years and uh, we can choose so for example here i've chosen two years so it will choose the two year data um, that's being covered in the in the dashboard here at the top as well, you can also choose a refresh time of dashboard. So um, you can choose anything from seconds to minutes and hours and days. So every time you you can set that um, dashboard to to refresh. The dashboard are interactive. So for example, in this incident management dashboard, if you look here, for example, in the incident assignment heat map, you can see the the critical high tickets that you that are currently ongoing. Now, if we click on here, for example, the 49 critical instance, what that will happen is that will open up a new page and provide some further detail in terms of those incidents. So here we are in if we look back at uh, if you remember, there was 49 incidents assigned um, by clicking on on the dashboard that provides you that that list of the 49 incidents that's currently open. Now, if you wish to, um, you may want to have a scenario where you want to look at detail of that incident. So you can click on click on that incident, and that will then retake you into into Smart IT. If we just wait a moment. Okay, so this has opened up the, the the incident itself, so you can go, anyone can go directly into the incident and review what is happening with this this critical incident. So this is a quick way to access the the information from the dashboard. With access to this dashboard, what you can do is you can share this dashboard. So you can create a link uh, just by copying here at the link of the of the dashboard itself. You can also export it, the dashboard for sharing externally, so via as a JSON file, and you can also download the, the dashboard. So if you want to download it as a PDF or Excel, 
you can have also those options to download directly from the dashboard itself. One of the features of Helix dashboards is that you, for example, if you have created a dashboard in your development environment and you wish to take that over to production, you can import and export the file. So for example, here we have a, have a dashboard in, in development and we want to move it to, to another environment into another folder. So what we can do is we can share it, we can export, um, we can save the, the JSON file. And if we close that, and if we go back to back to browse, and what we'll do is look to import that file. So upload the JSON file. We'll take the latest JSON file here. Um, what we'll do, we'll put it into a different folder, ITSM. Uh, let's call it AD1. Um, we'll change the unique ID. So let's call it E. And then what we'll do, we'll import it. So if we just give that a moment. Okay, so now if we go back to our, our dashboard browse, and if we go into the Helix ITSM folder, here you'll see the dashboard AD1. So what's it, what it's done is we've exported it from one environment using the JSON and imported it into, into production called AD1. Let's move on to creating the dashboard. So creating the dashboard, here we've got a couple of options where we can create a new panel and add a, also add a panel from the library. First of all, if we add a panel from the library, Remember I showed you earlier that the library which had a usable report already. So what we'll do, we'll choose that one and we'll, we'll add that onto the, onto the panel. Um, and let's go back to create a dashboard again. And then what we can do is add a panel here. Um, let's add a panel. So now from the query, so we chose BMC Helix as a default. Uh, if we go to service management and we choose something similar as earlier. So again, it can be done by form or by SQL. So let's choose uh, a form name. So HPD help desk. Let's choose a couple of columns, for example, status. And then on the right-hand side, we can add another. So for example, priority. Okay, let's add, a, let's add a calculated field. So for example, number of incidents. Now you'll see here at the top, um, as we fill out the form, it gives us a suggestion of open, of open visualization suggestions. Um, so, in terms of suggestions here, suggested either bar graph or heat map. So for example, let's, let's open it as a, as a bar graph. Um, so it's developed that now into a, into a bar graph option. So let's go back to our dashboard. Um, so obviously you can, you can see it's now been moved to as a, as a bar chart. Um, we can also edit that and also change, change the type, for example, to a heat map. And if we go back here, you see it's been changed to a heat map. You can add in and edit your, your tables as well. You can also move around the, again, designing your own, design your own dashboard, you know, with however, however you like. So here we've extended that, to, that uh, visualization into a large table. So that's how you create a new dashboard in, in Helix dashboards. And just finally, as mentioned, if you do browse, um, let's discard this. If you do browse within Helix dashboards, there is a number of um, dashboards that is available. So for example, if you go to a, into your live chat, so if you have virtual agent, um, you can certainly use that information as part of your, as your dashboard. 
Um, so it will pull up information in terms of your live chat sources, your session times. So you can monitor your service in terms of your in terms of your live chat. Also, uh, another another good um, one if we go to digital workplace. So a digital workplace review. Uh, let's just refresh the data just to get a bit more information. So here we can we can look at um, looking at your digital workplace request um, service. So it identifies you, you know, for example, your top 10 requested services, your categories, your top 10 sites, um, and also by status. So it gives you a good insight into your into your services that you're providing to organizations. You can also, um, again, you can change it, these, you can change the dashboard of how you like. Um, so you can, if you wanted to mess around with the dashboard and change it into a more satisfactory layout, you can do that simply. So these are some of the dashboards that's available um, in, in Helix dashboards to you. Well, thank you very much. That's the, that's the demonstration finished with in Helix dashboards. of the demonstration we looked at the launch and landing page we looked at the configuration within helix dashboards the scheduling of reports using the explore function we also demonstrated the creation of a dashboard and also how to export and import a dashboard and also showed some variants of the dashboards that are available by default within helix dashboards We do have these BMC Helix dashboard resources available at the following product documentation link. Thank you for joining today. I hope you have enjoyed today's Helix dashboard webinar. The next one is the BMC Helix dashboards IDSM advanced report design best practices, which is on Wednesday, the 31st of August. Please subscribe via Connect with Helix webinar page when the link becomes available. Thank you.